Welcome back to Dark Marketing, everyone. I'm your host, Big Dom, and this is GSA Website Contact. And this is going to be a follow-up to our Scrape Box Parts 1 and 2, where we're going to talk about how we use those lists in today's scenarios. But right now, I've got four setups running, and I want to kind of take you into that. We'll go through the proxy setup and some of the particulars that I've been testing with variations in my variables for the actual postings. So with that being said, let's get started. Now if we look here at the bottom of my screen, you'll see I am remoted into four systems where I am currently running GSA website contact. And oh, this does not look too good here. So let's take a look at all them. This one looks like she's doing pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Now, there's a number of different logistics going on between these systems and what I've been doing. And so, uh, in recent weeks, I had a lot of problems with various proxies and proxies getting, you know, I was getting proxy errors. And so I tested several different companies and even wound up going back I canceled one company and they came back and said hey we fixed your proxies we gave you a free month please try them again and they worked so that being said in these different scenarios I want to take a look at like this list is that I'm running comes from a these are all running from purchased lists that I purchased general website contact form lists Okay, there's no rhyme or reason. They're not targeted. And this one says April. So I'm still running from an April USA-based list of 100,000. Okay? And that list is older because we're already in July and other people buy that list. And so there is a possibility that many of these sites are not going to... Um, they may have spam filtering or they may have moved their contact form or done a number of other things. So... Uh, I have some varying, even though I'm running old list at the same time on one system, see this, I'm running a list from June, and I just got my July list, they came out late uh, this year, and so right now, with these four scenarios, I'm running, um, gee, there's something going on here, bad thing, so I'm going to pause this, because I don't want this campaign going so far south, but I've got proxy banned. And in all four of these scenarios, what I'm doing is I'm running my GSA with proxies scraped. Now, just be aware that I did a couple of scenarios where I actually put uh, 2,500 HTTP proxies in, IP4s, v, IPv, IPv4s, and that they ran well. But then I also tested with scrape proxies and back and forth, the combination of both uh, the private and the public proxies that I scraped. And I realized I was just getting mostly, I could get just as good as a result with my scraping proxies. So let's just take a look. Like this is what one of my projects would look like. So we go into our prox project settings and Look, even if we were scraping, it would be the same thing. But we're not s scraping with these scenarios. So we're using a list. And here, what we want to do is we want to check use proxies for sending. So now we're going to get the, the proxy dialog box here. Now something you need to understand about this, this is the same for all of GSA's products. They have it built in. So if you... Just get something as small as GSA's search engine indexer. It has this product built in. All of their products have these free proxy scrapers. So let's just take a look at how to, you're going to configure that. First, we go over to the options. And in this case, we're not using private. We're using public. And I like to set this for every 30 minutes. And I'll either put 1,000 or 1,500 proxies I want it checking. And that's 
really it for this. I'm not doing any other magical stuff, but what we want to do when we go over to, to the list, what we want to do is we want to add proxy sites. Now by default, they'll just have a couple of things checked in here. So I like to go down here to like free proxy. I look for things with .com extension, .net. I don't want to mess with Russian extension, especially, you know, with the war in Ukraine right now, there's a lot of IP blocking. They're cut off from us. We're cut off for them. So I don't really want to get involved with that. But I add some extras. Okay, that's probably going to do it. They've got a pretty extensive list here. You know, proxy, fast socks, blog socks, proxy free list. Okay, so now we, we need to beef that list up a bit more. And... Just a little tip with that, if you're getting enough proxies, especially like if you use uh, paid proxies in this scenario, what you'll notice is, like one thing we see here, when, when we see these colored fields of activity going right up to the top here, as opposed to, well here, see, again, we're going up to the top, that means that means the contact software is not running fast enough or processing enough. And that could be a sign that it's not getting enough proxies. Whereas here, we've got a pretty good processing rate going on. Let's go back to the fourth one. Again, not bad, but sometimes these will be going. We'll have to stretch the view out on this so much because the processing will just, you know, we won't really see the activity. It'll go so far down and deep. So a bit of an indicator there by how many you see processing by that have completed with a response will give you an indicator how well your proxies are running and you know you could always stop and try to scrape some more change that setting so that being said that's how I would do that in here you know same thing so once when we go to add proxies what we want to do is we want to select find online and test now that we've got it configured. And generally, you know, once I, I'm going to start up a campaign, I like to get that going right away while I'm messing around with my other stuff. You want that running in the background, getting some lead time on scraping proxies before you're going to begin to run. So I just want you to kind of see in the sense that, you know, I know where everyone wants to go is they want to know like, well, for how many, for every 10,000 posts, how many responses do you get? You know, we're going to take a look at that because all of these campaigns are for the same thing. They are all using the same bit.ly short link. So we're going to take a look at that because it's not what you think. Uh, if you expect that out of 10,000, you're going to get 1,000 or 1 in 10, you're not. It's going to be less. And we're going to talk about those logistics. Now, again, let's go back to logistics and how I'm having problems and how I'm trying to figure them out because let's look at some of these numbers here. You see, I run my list in increments of a hundred thousand, and generally, what we really like to see is like a four to one or a three to one ratio, or that or three to two. You know, generally, four to one is optimal for every successful sent, one failed. That's my objective. Although, I was not reaching those objectives here. And that's not always the case, as I've had problem campaigns, as you can see. That sometimes here, 64 to 34. So it was kind of a 2 to 1, you know. Had some ones that, you know, they're running. Now, this one was just doing terrible. In fact, it's, it's a little more than one to one, but it was way down. It was one to three or one to four. They were failing. And so I had to get in there and figure out why. And I said, hey, this is a newer list. Common sense dictates I would have a higher success rate because on the other systems, I was not getting, you know, good success rates. Started off bad. So then I had to really break down the pieces. And what I did is, once I get my proxies running right, and I'm using cold proxies, and I'll put a link to that and some of the ones that, I, that I'm using in, down in the description, and uh, I'm using cold proxy IPv6 for the X-Evil. 
So what I wound up doing is turning the proxy off, submitting without proxies, and I ran uh, a, a VPN, Surfshark, which has an IP rotation, but I kept changing the location too every few minutes. And this was just while I was sitting at the machine to do testing and to see you know, what the impact of one on the other is. Because like, it's important to understand with proxies, I'm using cold proxy. Sometimes I've used proxy seller. And right now I'm using proxy scrape also which is another nice proxy, but they don't all work the same. Now, with cold proxy here, my proxies, I can set either authenticate by IP, but I don't want to authenticate by IP address because I would prefer to run a VPN if I and keep my systems behind the VPN and not expose my own IP address. But if I want to use proxy scrape, which I would use for my, uh, if I want to add GS into GSA, I would use those type in here. Problem is, you know, then I have to register that IP address. I can only register up to three IP addresses for authentication with the 2,500 IP addresses I got with this package. So that's a little bit limiting. Not totally. I could divide things up on different systems, but that's why I wanted to get to just the back to totally scraping like I was before. But I wasn't sure why am I having a problem now when I wasn't having a problem prior. So, you know, I start trying to break down the pieces. And fortunately, because I had four systems, I ran different scenarios. But the logistics didn't start, stop with just the proxies. They got a bit more involved because there were other things going on here. And clearly, I while this was going much better earlier on, It's not doing, not doing too good. So we'll have to get to the heart of that and see what's going on with this, which I probably won't get to in this video, but I'm going to have to come back to this one so we can see. Now, now see this? This is probably going to need an adjustment where I'm not getting enough proxies here into the process. And what I can do is stop this project and let's let's put something in here okay let me pause the video make sure I've got the proxy list on this system and I'm gonna add pay proxies into the scenario and let's see what happens but I also want to make some adjustments on this so I don't want to go too far off the path of the things that I'm doing because I have to keep my head wrapped around all these systems and the changes that I make alright I don't want to go down a rabbit hole on this video but at least you can see also how to add paid proxies in. So we're going to go to our submission content, use proxies for sending, configure. We were already configured. I was in here messing around. And we're going to go add proxies. And you could just select these down from the list. Oh, here. Add proxy. Go to my proxy list. Proxies. Uh, come on, come on. There it is. And this is the one I'm looking for. And now I got that. Yes, well, we don't have to test these because we know they work. Okay? But over here, we want to make sure that we have our private checked. Okay? Which I did already. And so now we're good to go. But actually, while I'm here, let me look at my add let's see what we got here now just be aware sometimes some of these are not going to help us so no matter what we need to make sure that we set that we test so when we go here when we go find online and test Okay, so now we're good to go. We're running. Now, since I stopped this project, when I go to start it again, oh, all right, it's going to pick up where it left off. But sometimes it'll give you a message about the list, and you want to say no. 
Because if you say no, then it's basically, if you say yes, you're basically going to be finished. If you say no, it's going to go back to the rest of the list. So you don't get confused about that message when you start and stop a project. Okay? So now we get this going again, and I'll give this some time, and we'll see where this is going to go. But this is just part of what I wanted to talk about. Now, in the actual setup, okay, what we basically do here is you got to understand how this thing is trying to be stealthy. So it's basically using random first name. And you can see there are different options that you can set here that basically they have a little link here to macros help. And this gives you the list of all the little macros that instead of if you if you didn't select one of these options if you decide to manually input you can put the information you want in here by just copying and pasting these little macros right into the project so that's very useful when you want to start to tinker around with a few things here now going back to our project settings for the most part in any real project only thing you're really going to set here is your message that's going to be contained inside the email and you're going to want to use like a bitly short link rather than your own actual website link because you want to be able to track the results the other thing is going to be your subject line okay and you see I've got a macro in here domain that inserts the URL from the site that it is submitting into that okay so that it gives it a sense of uniqueness in that the subject actually has the URL of the person's website that it's actually submitting the contact form. Okay, pretty simple. So, but by default, we see that this is using random first name, random last name, random name, self-described random email. Okay, and so it's creating all of these random emails and so let's talk about logistics, okay, in another context, because now I'm submitting all of these, let's just look here, right, I'm submitting to all these sites, so these are all my successful sense over these campaigns, um, 35, you know, 171, to, see here's a nice one, 71 to 25, pretty much a 4 to 1, but they haven't, Again, 71 to 25. A lot of these campaigns were some I didn't complete or whatever, but also not everyone was a winner. I've had issues with campaigns. And this was because of the proxies. But when now that I've got my proxy issue settled down, I should be back to a 4 to 1 ratio. And so when things go wrong, the idea is you're trying to find out and figure out what is going to bring you the highest success rate. Is it that my lists are purchased and they're old because I'm running from April and there's already been May, June, and now July. And I'm going to be putting a July list in since I just got them but two or three days ago to see if those are better. But remember, I'm using someone else's list. In the meantime, I've got three systems behind me that are scraping lists that I'm trying to choose what I feel are website categories that are much more active, competitive, and may have a, a higher response or receptiveness to the type of campaigns that I'm promoting for my services, okay? So that being said, you have to understand how after, let's just assume I get four to one, beautiful, right? If out of 100,000, uh, even if I just get 75,000 successfully sent, how many of those are really, really successfully sent? And to understand that, well, we have to understand how a spam filter works. Now, on my websites and client websites, I use CleanTalk Anti-Spam, which is a third-party integration with WP Forms and SMTP, you know, the form sending plugin. So it's basically like a three, three parts where I use WP Forms, an SMTP plugin and anti spam. And the three of these things tie together. So, this is for SEO Depot. And this shows contact form denied, contact form denied, contact form denied. Because, let me just back up. 
here's my list for this where I could go and see my spam and what's happening let's look at the details because this is actually capturing it and what they're doing is they are using this these are examples of people using GSA contact or perhaps Scrapebox to submit to contact forms and what's happened is these have simply been captured and taken and placed in a spam box I never see them okay now there are a few instances where someone gets blocked because they're using a VPN or they their email address they're actually manually submitting the form and they are blocked in which case I would see them over here but in my website's uh, database I have contact form abandonment so I would still see that they attempted to fill out the form and that they didn't complete the mission so I check those against this list to see if there's any in here in which case if there is like I have a client he's global a lot of people hit the contact form they're coming from countries they're using banned IP addresses even though the lead is legitimate so we have to go and track those down they get captured in the contact forms database because I use the abandonment form additional module which WP forms WP forms is if you're not familiar with is a is probably the leader at contact forms and they have a lot of modules additional modules so it's a very pro setup but that being said let's look at the details here because if we click on this right here this person it'll tell us that this was reported as spam and we can scroll down and recently blacklisted spam emails see that so let's let's step back here let's look at it from the IP address perspective same user recently blacklisted spam IPs now see what's happening this was the sender's email this system is working for tens of thousands of people across the web and it's getting information from blacklists that are freely available out there that everyone can just do a search and if you're not familiar with blacklist tools hold on to check and in case you also want to check that your own IP address gets blacklisted now if you go to the MX toolbox at mxtoolbox.com you can select black list okay you can put your IP address in and as you can see my fixed IP address is clean beautiful okay but these systems feed these lists and that's where this info is coming from and so we could see that basically this person is running fake email doing the same thing what our product here GSA is doing it's creating random emails but they're coming all from the same IP address and this is the reason why we need proxies so that they all come from different IP addresses now here are some of the things that I have been experimenting with and of course I have an own and well don't own but operate my own VPS with websites on it and I have full access but of course as long as you have a website and you have domain names or a domain name you can configure email accounts so what one thing you can do is you can configure a catch-all email account inside of cPanel I'm not going to cover that here you can google it inside the cPanel there is an option the term is catch-all catch-all email account so for example in a catch-all email account here's what we could do we could take uh, we have these tags here so what we could do is we could take a random domain title keywords which is the names here we go random first name random last name right so now let's say I want to do these with my own email address okay what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select self-defined okay hit OK and now this dialogue is gonna come up and now I could do this I could do this random sorry for the interruption house phone going off I got the random first name and random last name and what we want to do is put a dot in there like that 
So we've got like first name dot last name, and now what I got is I go like this at SEO hyphen depot.com. See that? And that's going to give me just generate random first name, random last name, and I've got a catch all that says any name that comes to my domain name, put it in this mailbox. So I've got a special mailbox just designated for that approach. That's one way to go about it. Now, another thing that I did was I experimented with, I made 10 domain names and they went like this. Sales one at SEO Depot, okay? So instead of the random names, and then what I did is I put spin tax, like so. So I made sales one, breaker bar, sales two, breaker bar, sales three, breaker bar, sales four, breaker bar, and let me just put the quotes in there. So this example here, this will cycle through sales one, sales two, sales three at SEO Depot. Understand? But I began to realize, regardless of that, when you start to analyze what's actually going on over here with the spam filters, you know, I was like, am I having a good enough success rate with that? Right? So now let's. So. I'm trying to gauge what my success rate is. So this is where you really got to, you know, you're going to feel things out to the end. So now I'm doing random emails, but I'm also going to make sure I've got random IP addresses. And the other thing that I didn't do is actually test this. What I should have done is also added my own website into the list or do a test to my own website and see if it triggers the spam filter after I've been running. But some, there were some very interesting things that wound up happening. But let's, but let's just stop because what we're trying to do here is reason out some different ways to affect the logistics of the setup. So there's one other thing. So obviously you guys want to see is the actual end result of the actual tracking. So let's just take a look at that too. Okay, I'm going to just pause. Now, this is my Bitly link for SEO Depot, and you can see I've had 18,565 clicks over a few months of me running campaigns. Now, I don't really kind of pay attention to what the daily clicks are. I, at this point, I have a feel of if I'm running two campaigns or if I'm running four campaigns, you know, what they should feel like in terms of how much activity I'm getting on the website, you know, my visitors. Because generally, as a rule, I've found that almost any campaign you'll get, you'll get somewhere between 200 to 400 clicks that someone will actually come in from your, even if you do an affiliate. These are some, some old ones I did. This, uh, this is uh, for tracking for my web thing, but these were just some tests I did back in the day. Right, Sonic. I did something, I got 899 clicks, I had a good response from one or two, I, I think I only did like two, two campaigns for that. Vidly, 462 clicks, Moosend, 181, a lesser, you know, appealing product, not everybody needs bulk emailing, automated services, so it's for, uh, you know, so I, I messed around with a few things to see what kind of clicks I would get from the campaign. And you could see I get like about, you know, these average numbers from the campaign. Look, this one, not very good, 91 clicks. So it really just depends. They can really vary by the appeal. How much, how much of that was my messaging, my subject, my message, you know? But those were just some tests for some affiliate things that I tried that didn't, you know, not that they didn't work out well. I had a few purchases here and there, but not enough that, hey, it's not, I'm going to make $1,000 a day or $4,000 a month. Sorry. There are other things that I could run, you know, then. But when I first saw that a lot of guys were talking about, you know, doing affiliate marketing with this. And, of course, my, my emails, too, are filled with junk things that come in just from the junk mail. And I realized, you know, it's a similar 
Similar thing to the contact form. I said, how many people are actually responding to these things? So I did some tests and I just said, well, you're not, you know, you're not getting rich with this approach. Possibly then when you start to take the right product to the right targeted people, it's a different ball game. Now in my case where I'm selling just my services, it's a winner, okay? Because I'm running campaigns that, look, everybody with a website needs some SEO service. So it's, you know, even though I'm selling backlinking, it's got that appeal basically that, hey, everyone needs to be competitive, so they often want to take a look, even if they're not interested in purchasing. Now, how many of those people convert? For my service, it's different. It's not like they just come in and go, yeah, I'm buying this, you know. They need to contact, they have questions, there's a whole sales approach, okay? But one thing is, I have a sense of what is going on, because here, I've got a chat app on my website that is, you know, showing me every time someone comes on the website, you can see here, you know, on my phone and it's on my tablets and it's set to go to send me a message every time someone gets on this site, I get a certain tone, but if they actually communicate, it gets like a ringtone that they're actually uh, trying to respond into the chat app. So I get a very specific sense of what is, you know, what is good activity. So one thing I discovered when I was running, doing a lot of these tests with the campaigns is that at one point I was just running this June campaign and another campaign and I was having such issues with the other campaign there wasn't really any results there to be had. And as a result, though with this campaign when I initially started it, I was doing the scenarios that I was just kind of showing you here with the project settings where I was using real information, using real email accounts that would accept. And even though I was only, I'm getting, and in fact, while now I'm doing a little better than one to one, I was way down behind. I was literally like one to four in the beginning, I was failing so bad, but it rebounded and came back up. And one thing I realized in the use of that, that I was getting a much higher activity of people actually clicking through and coming to the site. So the success rate, so maybe, even though it's only showing one-to-one, -one, those ones that were getting through, they were really getting through and not, not getting swallowed up by some spam filter system because you could see this thing captures everything and I can see the whole message I can review this this whole message it keeps everybody because as you can see if I go back you know currently I'm up to 192 so these are my some of my client ones a couple of dead ones here but by analyzing how these spam filters work and they're literally showing us how people now see this a lot of these these look like free emails created that were being used in a process that were also recently detected spam active emails. So this guy's clearly a marketer. He's been using, he's using both random emails and when you see these outlook.com, outlook is a very easy make free email, uh, like GSA website contact. It's one of a GSA search engine ranker when you create email accounts and, and these other softwares where they actually create them. A lot of what they use is outlook. Very easy to create free accounts. Of course, a lot of them don't last very long, so that's another problem, especially like with the Outlook ones. So just so you know, and look, we even see the number of attack sites. So recognizing how these spam systems pick up on these things, that's why we need to be stealthy. And I was trying to gauge between, well, what if I mix it up with, you know, real emails or catch-all emails and versus... Uh, doing everything completely random. So now while I've worked my way back around to all completely random setups, seeing what's going on with the numbers and the different lists from different months and getting sort of a, you know, I'm a little better at gauging out a whole range of logistics with different systems and not getting, you know, my brain too wired out over it because I'm, I'm kind of used to that. And I'm going to go back to trying to do more things with the 
randomizing using my own emails with a catch-all and or using spin tax and taking them through like 10 different sales accounts where I'm just catching, you know, and I don't have to answer those email accounts. They're just for the purpose of sending these things. But, you know, you can go in and check because most likely if somebody actually were to go to the email and try to email you directly from that email rather than clicking on the link, most likely they, they're doing it to complain rather than contact you because they're going to click through, they're going to go to the site and they're going to see, you know, all of this stuff and go the normal road. So that being said, I wanted you to understand these pieces and how I analyze that looking at, you know, these spam filter information and recognizing how these systems are trying to stop us. So there's a good possibility, really, that despite whatever results I think I'm getting here, you know, now when I'm seeing all this is okay, this is only means it's okay that X evil successfully solved the capture. And then over here, we've got a good scent thing going on. Now, this was an older a campaign that I started last week that I restarted. And I, I'm not sure it's doing too good. See, it's like one to one. And this is why I was trying to figure out why am I suddenly getting one to one? Is it because these lists have gotten old and I stalled with my campaigns? But like I said, I went to a June list. And I was also not having, I was having issues. So part of the process is sort of playing with these different metrics to figure out where your real success lies. But to think just because, well, you got a lot of failures. Listen, you're going to get a lot of failures. That's just the way it is. You, that's why this is a big numbers game. And that's why, you know, utilizing Scrapebox, building your own lists is a really good way to go. And then that's what we're going to get into next because... Currently, what I'm doing right now is, let me just pause this a second. Now, let me just open this system because it just finished a scrape. And what I'm doing currently is I am scraping my own list. And since a lot of people have been asking me, where can I get list and specifically targeted lists? Well, that is what I'm going to do because... I actually found some great value for some clients to build actual contact lists for different industry segments, which they are using successfully to do like email campaigns, direct marketing with. That being said, as I'm trying to create lists, I realize I'm doing it in a much more targeted fashion in the sense that instead of just trying to get like random websites and have contact forms, but rather specific industry segments and make them part of a bigger list that I'm hoping will be much more successful and in a general approach, but also like to be able to make those lists available for sale as different industry segments. Part of that is all going to depend on you know, what the sizes of the list are that I can do successfully and how well they can be maintained. But at least for even a very good general list, I believe that I can produce a much better 1 million to 2 million list monthly and have a subscription for you guys with some really good quality stuff. Now, just some tips for you guys if you're scraping your own sites, like someone asked me, you know, you, you want to get the locations and the your keywords. Go and create a merge list. Get a list of the city and state and, you know, you can Google it, make a little list, get a text file, and you'll have your keywords here, and you merge that file. We have no keywords to merge, but let's just say whatever I'm, I'm doing, and then you merge it. For each keyword, you will have the city and state, okay, and searched with that keyword when you merge the list. Now, if you're just using the footprint and you want to, you're going to just be looking for contact forms and you just want to build random lists. Well, let me tell you something. The holy grail of making that work is by building a good keyword list. And do not use the keyword scraper to scrape from the list of words that you have already. Because what will happen is, ultimately, it's just going to be, re those scraped keywords come from the same sites. So you're just going to wind up with more and more duplicate URLs. The holy grail to capturing a lot of really good diverse sites is going to be with a good diverse keyword list. And that is going to be a mission to create that list 
and reuse it over time and perhaps you'll build multiple lists. But I've seen a few videos online where, hey, somebody said, hey, you can make a list and look how fast I can make a two million list. And he makes it look really fast. However, you don't see the duplicates sorted out at the end. Also, if you don't pay close attention, the list of keywords that he puts in to do his scrape is, is like 310,000. And just what I saw like in the port, the viewport up here, he had diverse keywords. They weren't like all about the same thing. Now, what you want to do maybe is get out onto Google and search for keyword list. There's quite a few resources for things out there that will give you ideas. I'll let you do that on your own, you know, just go out and do a little exploring. But just some tips for that as far as scraping. The other thing is, here's the problem with this, is that when you use the Yell scraper, you're not... You're not going to get contact form URLs. You're going to get pure URLs ultimately. So what we're going to want to do is, you know, what I've done is when I look at the lists I purchase and you analyze them, 90% of the URLs end in either forward slash contact or forward slash contact hyphen us. So you see there's sort of a pattern. So one thing that could be done with some of those lists, once, once you've scraped them, is to take that list and run it back into scrape box and use and what you could do is then up, use the merge list the merge tool to merge the word contact forward slash contact forward slash contact us and let it verify every URL that you that you put in you know actually what you really want to do you're not going to do that you want to take your list and use Notepad Plus, okay, and you want to take that list with this. And see how this what I got here? These are keyword lists. Just happened to open up that I was working on. But with Notepad Plus Plus Plus, once you take a list of URLs that you take it that you've harvested, you can just use Notepad you are, uh, Plus Plus to append anything at the end and so you could just append to the entire URL list forward slash contact forward slash contact hyphen us and then uh, Scrapebox has a utility that lets you verify the URLs and you can just rip through those lists and then take out the ones that check out for contact which ones check out for contact hyphen us and merge them another thing is also, GSA website contact doesn't necessarily have to have the actual contact form URL, but it's going to work a lot better if we have it. So in that case, we want to also have it checking, check the list to make sure that the URL is verified. So those are some things I'm still working out the minutia of, but I just want to kind of give you that the, the heads up tip on how to approach it yourself. Because when I, if I'm going to make list available, I want them to be the the highest quality list as possible so that if you want to be able to take a list and say you know churn and burn because um, two million is a lot to try to run in a month okay and if you only got one GSA website contact uh, license you're not going to be running two million a month you're just not going to be able to do it you're going to be able to run you know maybe at best you know if you can run a hundred thousand every three days do the math okay so that being said, well, yeah, I guess 100,000 every three days, that's uh, 10 thing, a million. You can run a million with one copy. So, you know, to understand, to get a good list, you know, that's a bit of a project. And so uh, as I get the minutiae worked out, then in the coming weeks, I'm going to make that available as soon as possible on darkmarketing.biz. Now, guys, hope you found this video very useful on GSA that we got into some of the, the gist of things but I guess what we'll have to do maybe is up oh, it's already running is get a get a part two going where I want to just maybe touch on what are the best settings that I wound up working out in the best scenarios because right now even though I've got three of these running I'm not hearing my messaging going off and I'm seeing seeing slow processing rates at the top so I've got to get back in there today, make some adjustments, and get these things firing. Because when I'm running four copies of GSA promoting on my website, that thing is going off every minute. Bing, 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 every minute, every two minutes, three minutes tops. 
I'm hearing bing and a couple together. That's just like a casino. So that being said, guys, if you like these videos, remember to give us a like and to subscribe if you want to see more great videos like this. Thanks again. And remember, if you found these videos because you were looking for backlinking, marketing services, SEO, but you realize that these softwares and the approaches are a project and a skill set unto themselves, and you are in the business of doing your own business, but realize you need these services, well then head over to seo-depot.com, reach out to us. We provide the highest quality backlinking campaigns that generate increased traffic in organic and responses to keywords in combination with your own SEO. We also provide coaching and the best practices that will help benefit you the most with our services that can really help inflate your presence and provide stability against Google's algorithm changes. Guys, thanks again for watching and have a great day.